All right, everybody, welcome to Gwen After Dark. I'm here with Ruben. He is finally back. He has made it. He has finally made it through the fires, literally. Yes, yes. I am I'm very excited. I'm glad you're here, man. Last, as some of you that watched or watched the videos, it was kind of a dumpster fire, no pun intended, sorry. <laughs> and um, we just kind of had to catch things best we could. And we had guest stars that really had no preparation. And it's kind of, it was kind of a mess. But now we have the, the, the main guy here, so we're good to go. Um, today's show, we have a little, a little different guest. So we're doing a little something different today. We are going to have a lore review. We are going to take a short story from the first Witcher collection of short stories called The Last Witch. We're going to look The Last Wish, and we're going to look at one of the short stories in it that I think is really, really good, and you should pick out. It's called A Grain of Truth, and to do that with me, I have The Clean Cajun, uh, a streamer that does a lot of cool stuff. She's going to be here with me. She's also my fiance. Hey. All right, that's a <laughs> that was the introduction. She has a very good handle on literature. We're going to talk about the short story for a little bit, kind of go into the lore. If it's a popular segment, we'll do more on it and uh, go from there. So, uh, and then I, of course, if you might know who I am, may not. Uh, she flew the cards, very understated. Uh, I think that's really nice. And um, we're going to go on from there. So, welcome to the show. We're glad you're here. And uh, we're very, I know. It's good to have Ruben here. I'm very excited about our uh, – yes, there I am. Hey, I'm here. Okay, so the first the first book we're looking at, and we also have the, uh, the audience participation right over here. So we're ready to take some questions. First, we're going to go into it. So the story, A Grain of Truth, in the first book, The Last Wish, is a really awesome story. And it has kind of, I think you'll agree with this, um, Clean Cajun, is it has a kind of remnants of Beauty and the Beast. Do you think that's Yeah, right? it is definitely based on the fairy tale. Beauty and the Beast? Yes, it's, it's obviously based on that. Let's see if we can get you in here. Let's see if I can get her in here so we can kind of... There we go. There she is. And forgive the editing, but that's her. That's Clean Cajun. Uh, <laughs> so um, you've never read The Witcher, right? You're, this is this is a new. Uh, you've you've seen me play it. Talk about Gwen quite a lot, right? Um, what did you think of the story? What did you think of the Witcher universe? Oh, it's amazing. I have um, I have a lot of experience. Uh, my bachelor being um, in psychology, so the setting of study of human behavior. But I also have a double minor um, in creative writing in English. So I really enjoyed the creative writing aspect of it. And it is, you know, straight lore. Like you said, it's, it's an incredible universe. I really like it. Awesome. That's cool. We haven't really talked about it. We've refused to talk to each other about it, so we were surprised by what each other had to say. I was hoping that she'd get into it the universe. It has killed him. Let me, okay, let me just say this. It has killed him. He has been coming at me full speed all week long. Yeah. He's like, okay, what do you think hair. of this? What do you think of this? And I'm like, you can't talk about this until the show. And so, uh, I mean, you're pretty excited to talk about it. I am pretty excited. Yeah. I am, yeah. I am I pretty excited. Too. Yeah. So uh, the story centers around Geralt of Rivia. You may or may not have heard of him. Uh, he's going. He's just wandering the countryside, going from venture to venture, and he comes across some dead bodies, correct? Yeah. So he goes to investigate it, and it brings him into a house, which there is a monster, oddly enough. Um, the monster's name is Novellan. He has a name. Um, he has a deformity, and he goes into his uh, story of how he came this way. Uh, apparently, he was part of a... Um, uh, he was part of a, a group of guys that came upon a priest, a temple, uh, and they assaulted a priestess. And uh, let's see, let me see. I get the. I'm gonna get the right quote here. So, Kate, if you want to take this part and kind of explain a little more. Oh sure. Okay. So to go into more depth, um, Novellan or 
the beast, as he's called, he has complete control and power over his house. So he can make the house do pretty much whatever he wants, um, which is very much a parallel of Beauty and the Beast, um, as most people might know. Um, the dead bodies that Geralt finds in the forest, it is a woman and a man. Um, and it's obvious the woman has been bitten by some sort of vampire. Um, she has, you know, the two bites on her neck, um, even though her face and neck are pretty much missing, um, except for the part where she has the bites. Um, and so it's very important to clarify that it's a man and a woman. Um, so he goes and he goes into the castle and he has a very interesting, you know, what do you say? Ted on Ted? This is exactly right. Ted on Ted with, um, Geralt. Yes. Okay. So that's, this is what first caught me. The, uh, this is what really, um, made me love and get really into this um, lore of uh, this book, right? So here's Geralt going into great description, a monster's house. And so the monster is very intelligent. Um, this is what he says to Geralt. I'm going to read it to you. I'm sorry, but I think this is very important to kind of talk about the, the way this is written and how well it is. Um, so Geralt confronts the monster. The monster says, And what are you in the habit of doing? I've heard about witchers. They abduct tiny children whom they feed with magic herbs. The ones who survive become witchers themselves, sorcerers with inhuman powers. They're taught to kill, and all human feelings and reactions are trained out of them. They're turned into monsters in order to kill other monsters. I've heard it said it's high time someone started hunting witchers, as there are fewer and fewer monsters and more and more witchers. Do you do you have some partridge before it's completely do you have some partridge before it's completely cold? And then he goes, Why don't you say anything? he asks, indistinctly swallowing. How much of the rumors about witchers is true? Practically nothing. And what's a lie? There are fewer and fewer monsters. I mean I just think that's really great because he's, you know, as we all know from playing the game or reading the books, he doesn't necessarily mean monsters in terms of, you know, werewolves, strigas, bruxes, whatever. He's talking about just mo bad people, right? And in this case, here are these two people, part of the story, yeah. talking at a table, and neither one of them are monsters. But the world sees them in mon as monsters. And yeah, that's the whole part. Um, that's when I got really excited about... Um the whole universe because I've watched I watched you play the Witcher and I've watched Gwent. Um and something that fascinates me about Gwent so much is um how much you will only do well at Gwent if you become the character of Geralt. Um which is being stoic and very inscrutable. Like you just can't show any sort of um I get poker face. You know, you got to have poker face and it doesn't matter what you're dealt. It's, you know, can you trick someone? And, um, I got really excited. Um, like he talks about the grain of truth and he goes on and says, you know, quote for quote, the grain of truth is love and blood. Oh, oh, oh skip ahead. Oh, I went ahead. Skip, <laughs> skip, skip, skip way ahead. Skip way ahead. Okay. We're trying to build up to that. So the story, so the story is a grain of truth, and she kind of jumped the shark a little bit. So all, the, what I said. all of the stories, all the short stories, actually, the the title of them is is what the story's about. Sometimes very subtle, sometimes very very um, directly. Uh, in this case, it is very directly. But what happens was to get, Navellan then tells his story, and he talks about how he became this monster, uh, and he's kind of described as a, as a as a man with a, like a warthogish beastly face which is you know the beast from being the beast um and so he they he and his friends at the time he was trying to prove that he was an, a man and to his friends they're kind of making fun of him because he was kind of awkward and gangly um so they uh attack and rape a priestess so she gives him a curse and what she says is she said that that i was a monster in human skin that i'd be a monster in monster skin something about love blood i can't remember she must have had a dagger a little one hitting in her hair she killed herself and then so she cursed him she cursed him that he was a monster on the inside he would then therefore be a monster on the outside um so Ger Geralt and he um continue to have this talk about his life how he's what is he you know what's happened since then and it turns out that since then his life has actually changed a little bit for the better. Um, yeah, ra r random townspeople, this one old man stumbled onto his house and was scared of him, and he felt bad that the man was scared of him, so he gave him some gold. 
and then it got out into the town that this there's a rich monster, and so people started bringing their daughters to him in exchange for gold, and they lived there for a year. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. It's Beauty and the Beast, right? So uh, there's some there's twists on that, though. A uh, more realistic, um, greedy kind of take on it. It's very interesting. Um, and then he explains how he doesn't really care that he's a monster. He said, well, it's true. I have a horse's health, which came with the way I look, for one. Secondly, my being different works on girls like an aphrodisiac. Don't laugh. I'm certain that as a human, I'd have to give a mighty good chase to get a girl like, for example, one of the girls he, ha- he had, who was extremely beautiful maid. I don't suppose she'd have glanced twice at, a f- at the fellow in the portrait. And thirdly, safety. Father had enemies, and a couple of them had survived. People whom the crew, under my pitiful leadership, had sent to the graves, had relatives. There's gold in the cellar. If it wasn't for the fear inspired by me, someone would have come and get it if only p- peasants with pitchforks. So he's kind of saying, hey, it's not bad. Like, it's good. I, I'm not, I don't really enjoy it. I'm having a lot of good sex. I am rich. I am safe. It's not, yeah, it's, there's worse things, right? Yeah, and he can literally conjure up anything he wants yeah. in the house. Yeah, whatever he wants. Um, yeah. Now, along this time, since he's out here in this forest and he's having the time of his life, and I keep on having a song run through my head. That Top Gun song, you know, or no, not Dirty Dancing song. I've had a time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> apparently at that same time, uh, right, right, at the same time, um, a monster had taken notice of him in this forest in this particularly good setup he had, uh, and it happened to be a um, uh, a Rusalka, which is a, a greater vampire, uh, and so he told him, he said, Geralt, while he was talking to this monster, was hearing and knew that there was something else. He was in against investigating dead bodies, but he realized that uh, there was something else. It wasn't this creature that had done it. It was something else. And so he had obviously sensed it was a vampire with the bite marks and the ripping of the head. Um, and so Geralt didn't laugh. He said, you know your Verena, and that's the name of the monster with him, is probably a Rusalka. I suspected as much. Slim, dark, she re- and this is the monster. I suspected as much. Slim, dark, she rarely speaks in a language I don't know. She doesn't eat human food. She disappears into the forest for days on end and comes back. Is that typical? More or less, the witcher, titan, roaches, girth strap. No doubt you think you wouldn't, she wouldn't return if you were to become human. I'm sure of it, he said. You know how frightened Rasalkas are of people. Hardly, whenever, hardly anyone's seen a Rasalka from up close. But Verena and I, pox on it. Take care, Geralt. So Geralt acts like he's leaving. So Geralt knows that there's a Rusalka that's killing people around the town, that they're being drawn to him to get his treasure, and she's feeding on him. Uh, and they have a relationship that, you know, we kind of discover later on yeah. is something more. So do you want to take the, you remember this next, you want to take this next part? I don't know if I'm talking too much, guys. So I, I hope you all like this. Uh, this is kind of different. I just want to kind of do it and kind of give you a lore. And then what I thought I'd do is the next week, if you like it, we do more and then tie more into the cards and the Witcher and kind of give you that um, like that. Anyway, so Geralt comes back. Geralt comes back, and he fights the uh, Rusalka in a very good battle, and it's going toe for toe. It's very well described, very awesome. Um, and she's about to land a killing blow or a hurtful blow, possibly on Geralt, but uh, she's stopped as um, Novellan takes a pitchfork and runs her through to save Geralt and also stop her from doing this stuff. Yeah. It turns out she's very upset. Mm-hmm. As, as as one might be, if a pitchfork, I mean, right? That might be in terms of ending a relationship. Dear John, note. Yeah. Pitchfork. I mean, you could have told me something. Right. You could yeah. have possibly been a little and more then subtle. Back too. Well, yeah. it depends on how you like it. Oh no! You killed. So. <laughs> so yeah. So it could be different. It could have handled it a different way. Yeah. Right. Maybe slowly <laughs> broke apart. <laughs> So Geralt stood up, fascinated by the scene, as he stabbed her uh, in this pitchfork. Dirty minds. Uh, still couldn't make himself act. He heard words resounding dully within his skull, as if echoing around a cold, damp dungeon. Mine or nobody's. I love you, love you. So it turns out that the Rusalka was actually in love with Novellan. And yeah. vice versa. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And so what happened was... Definitely. That love, when she killed him, when... when she, he killed her, and I think she killed him too, right? She attacked him. She p- pulled herself through the fish fork and attacked him. Mm-hmm. It's hard to remember. Okay. Well, it actually, he became human. It broke the curse because he had found true love. Um, and that's this is how it ends. And he's like, how is this possible? And then this is then Geralt breaking, you know, Jerry Springer, final thought of the day. 
That was great. Thank you. <laughs> How is it possible? Well, there's a grain of truth, and then this story ties it all together. There's a grain of truth in every fairy tale. Beauty and the Beast, said the witcher quietly. Love and blood, they both possess a mighty power. Wizards and learned men have been tra racking their brains over this for years, but they haven't arrived at anything except that. That what, Geralt? It has to be true love. The end. Yeah. So that was the story. So it was pretty awesome. A cool, I think a more uh, action-packed take on Beauty and the Beast. Also, I think a little better. Yeah. Just going to yeah. be honest. Um, a little more kind of ground in reality. So what do you think overall? With something that somebody not familiar, would you want to read more uh, Witcher stories? Oh, amazing. It was amazing. I've always commented on how great the, um, oh, what do you call it? The When you play in a video game and it looks really, really Immersion? Good. No. Like when you're playing and it's like, oh, it's so pretty in the background and the graphics? Graphics, yeah. I've always commented on how pretty the graphics are in The Witcher and how amazing it is. I think he equally does that with words in his literature. Seriously. And I really think um, the most important thing to get out of all of this are the social contingencies surrounding, you know, everything that's in this story and how it comes to life within The Witcher universe, which is probably how a small Polish you know, um, literature, <laughs> um, <laughs> some kind of, small you know, Polish literature, no, small po Polish literature writer somehow became, you know, internationally famous. I think it's with the social contingencies because what he comes to is, um, his, his point of the whole thing is good and bad, good and bad. It's not people. Mm. Good and bad is not people, it's not characters, it's actual behaviors, which is the most important thing in psychology. That, you know, his, Geralt's whole existence is to prove that um, witchers are bad and they are known to be murderers. And yet Geralt has, you know, this very, you know, quiet heart of gold. Like he is going to be noble and do the right thing and beyond all circumstances like his upbringing has actually made him into a witcher and he has all the witcher senses but he therefore uses them for good mm. you know it's like you think about it and what i mean by social contingencies is kind of you know you think about racism and you know everybody you know has these stereotypes about you know the homeless are always alcoholics or whatever and Geralt goes through the same thing. You know, witchers are murderers. They're horrible. He gets treated really badly. And he decides to, you know, follow his heart and do what that is. Even though he's very, very, you know, um, not actively saying out loud what that is. You know, what, what is in his heart. It's very quietly through literature, through his actions, you know, and he has this ability to see through people and see through um, to find the truth and to find who the monsters are and if the act is a monster in itself, you know? Uh, by the way, Cass, thank you so much for that comment. Uh, I do appreciate that. We are going to do more of these. I think it was well received. Otherwise, people are just in shock. Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> like, where's the Gwen car talk? It's coming. I swear to God. I swear. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. I just want to do something a little different. And and then there's like, for example, when I was reading more and more stories, and I'd come across a card, I'd be like, oh, that's what this that's card is. Yeah. yeah. Like Dol Blathana, the Valley of Flowers, if you know that. And that was it's just so many great things. And Novellan does need a card. Novellan's an awesome Oh, we were awesome just saying kid. that. Yeah. We were just saying that Novella needs Neneke, a card. Neneke uh, from Northern Realms. If you haven't read, Neneke is a character from the book, and she is awesome in the books. Yeah. Storybook time. Uh, yeah, storybook time. <laughs> this guy. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Ruben is a co-host. He's awesome. He's coming in in a second. Um... We're just doing a little lore thing while he jumps in, um, but we're almost yeah. done. But thank you, Little League. He and I, we're going to... Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, what was the, the your favorite, your one takeaway, your favorite thing about that short story that you thought was just great? What I thought was just great is that the writer himself, um, he has a very strong personal take on male figures. Um, he believes that male figures have gotten a bad rap and, you know, that there's 
the Beast has gotten a bad rap. Geralt has gotten a bad rap. And instead of turning that and making all the females bad and the males good, he actually did it with a lot of sophistication mm. um, and still continued to make both of them really good people and characters and made their behaviors good or bad, you know? Like he has this saying um, where you start to get this grip during the exchange about Novell and being, you know, he's he's a good guy. He's like, he's sitting at the table and he's eating, you know, his food and he's very polite. And even though he's a monster, he's like, ha has these huge fangs and he's super polite while he's doing it. Real quick, uh, this is this is one of the things, what I love about this, we have an audience, right? So Mule, uh, it, for those of you on Twitch that are watching this or the YouTube video, he's our, le le our resident lore master. And I wanted to get him on for a segment, by the way, Mule, so I'm trying to get you there. But So, uh, an addendum to the story, um, Rusalka is not a monster. Geralt thought she was Rusalka, who was mostly harmless. Then it turned out that she is a vampire of Bruxa, yeah. um, high, higher vampire. Um, also, Roach would not have reacted to Rusalka, but she, but she was fidgety because she was near a vampire, which Geralt finally noticed. So. Yeah. That's why Geralt was able to go back. So there we go. That that is important. Now that that's it's important. Very important. This yeah. is this is what this is, right? It's a talk show. It's an audience participation thing. Round of Gwent writes a great series of articles. Check out his site, by the way. This is a way for like uh, Ruben and I wanted this as a way to get everybody involved and 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 be a, be like a family. Like they have like little things we all contribute a little differently. So yes, feel free to join in. This is perfect. So it was in fact a uh, Bruxa, right? Yeah, Bruxton, yeah. So, very cool distinction. Thank you, Ronda Gwent. Thank you, Mule. Thank you, Stretchy. I see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, so, anyway, yeah. So, that's kind of my favorite thing about the story was I love each one of the short stories. They're phenomenal. Um, and then they also tie into a theme, which I love. But the, the, the I wish y'all could, you should really read it. Um, the, the character interactions I highlighted a little bit, but they're so good. Um, it's just a, truly a joy and gives you a much better love of the game. Like, for example, uh, just to end this on card notes, bring it back to Gwent before we go to the next segment. Thank you, Ruben, by the way, for being very patient, letting us do this. You're the man. Um, is Villa Metromirth, right? So he was Villa Metromirth the dragon, and if you hadn't read the books, you may not know that he was Bork Three Jackdaws. And a matter of fact, I had just read the story where they introduced the character of Bork Three Jackdaws, and it was an amazing story. So, um... It's like it tied it in. So when they changed his name, I felt like one of the cool kids. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I know what that is. I know that character. And he, it was a really cool story. So Borg 3 Jack Dawes, Villa Metromirth, really cool thing. Um, and they referenced Aquavist in that story and some cool stuff. Uh, anyway, so that is it for this segment of Lore Talk. I hope that y'all did enjoy it. Um, I really hope you did. It was kind of cool. Villain Tretton Mirth. Stretchy coming through. So I look, and that's awesome. Villain Tretton Mirth. <laughs> I'm gonna mess that up a thousand more times. But uh yeah, thank you. So Clean Cajun, thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Hope y'all liked it. And um she will be back hopefully if y'all, you know, didn't bash me too bad. So <laughs> thank you so much. We'll go to the next segment. Ruben, you there, bud? I am. I hear you well. I think we got our volume. Yeah, we got our volume stretched out. So let's see now. So, on your screen, I went away from the audience for a second. This is what we're going to do. This is today's show: a grain of truth review, which we just did. Hopefully, y'all liked it. And now we go into the the, the thing that we waited for last week. We couldn't do because of fires and whatnot. Oh, so what do I need to do? Right here? Oh, there we go. I got it.
Yeah, so, this, so, the, so the next segment we're going to do, um, we did the Grand Truth Review, got some good reviews. Everybody really liked it, by the way. They said thank you. I tuned away. So, yeah, they were really happy. Um, is New Gwent versus Classic Gwent. So this is going to be, I think, an interesting conversation. I wanted to have the first show. Um, the Gwent in The Witcher 3 versus the New Gwent as it is now, or New 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 Gwent, because it's probably going to be a few more news. Um, so what do you think of, we went to go to The Witcher 3, but what do you think of the difference, Ruben, between Gamescon Gwent and this new Gwent we've se we're seeing? Playing uh, a Gamescom version, and um, I can hear myself really loudly. I can't. Yeah, they can't hear you for some reason. Oh, that is weird. We had just checked this out. Nothing still. So I can hear you fine, but I, they can't hear you. I wonder why. We just checked this out too. We did this for an hour this morning. Is low. All right, let's try this. Let's try this. All right, try try talking now. Uh, I can talk now. What you can do? Oh no, I'm really low. I can hear myself again. Uh, what you can do is um, right click in Discord uh, in um, Teamspeak, and then change volume. Yeah, I think I already did. I have you at the highest volume. Change volume. No, that's because if I can hear myself like this, this is, it's a little distracting. Can y'all hear him? Now he's really loud. <laughs> We're going, we did the same thing. Okay, so let's lower this down. All right, try it now. Um, hello, guys. Can you hear me now, fine? <laughs> <laughs> oh. We did this for an hour. Now Ruben's louder than you. That's fine. That's fine. No, Ruben. Really, really early as well. Alright, so let me try to put the headset Just back in. Alright, so I tried that. Oh, let's hope it works. See, rip headphone, right? We just worked on this, I swear, for an hour. Is that. Is that better? Can y'all hear him? I guess there's a delay. Right, and we just worked on this too. Um, all right, so I mean, you're 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 coming through fine for me, but when I put the headset in, they can't hear you. I guess. I can hear Ruben once again, super low. All right, but if I take the headset out. No. Now it's out, probably. All right. Can you hear yourself again? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I got an idea. I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm going to put push to talk on. That way, you won't hear yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good solution. All right. Is it on? All right. I can not hear myself anymore. So, um, let's continue. Sorry about that, guys. Real sorry. Um, so we basically have three versions of Gwent, and um, the first version was the Witcher 3 version, which was the most basic and probably the most boring right now. It was a lot of fun playing, it was really addictive, but the, mo the best part about that Gwent was collecting the cards in-game and actually traveling and beating the opponents and collecting all the cards. That was the most fun aspect of that Gwent. If you actually play that Gwent online against people, it was a little, I mean, it was a little flat, maybe... Um, you could you could only play that many games before you was you, you really got sick of it. I mean, it, it's always fun to play it, but you know what I mean. This version, these versions, like the second version, that's game scope went. Um, we all knew how that played out because we had some uh, gameplay from Tabletop Simulator. I myself played a lot of Tabletop Simulator, and um, it 
my opinion, that was one of the best versions. But now we, I haven't had a chance to actually play the newer version, um, which is also part of the partly of the, the stress uh, kill this um, the service stress test um, thing. That's the newest Gwent, and the newest Gwent um, I haven't really looked into it that much. I know every card, I know all the mechanics and stuff, but I haven't played it online. I, I haven't made it uh, made a deck of it and stuff. Um, so I'm really, really curious. It's 10 more days. I can't wait to test it. And so, yeah, now that we actually know the three kind of quents, or the, the newer quents and the older quents, we can uh, start comparing. So, any thoughts, Shifu? Yeah, I um, I actually, it's very funny. I played, uh, I played obviously, Gwent, Witcher 3 Gwent, and then I played um, the Gamescon, made some decks, put them online. It worked really well. And this new Gwent, I actually, to be honest with you, I know you haven't played that much. I really, really, really like this new, new, new Gwent, or Gwent 3.0, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think that it's balanced really well. I like the change from um, the old way of... So, the, I can't remember the old way now. I guess with heroes and non-heroes to now bronze, silver, gold. I love that. Um, I love the fact that you can have a limited number of gold, which I wonder if they're going to stray away from because... That's like, you know, legendaries in Hearthstone, I guess. And you can only have four, which makes it great for new players because you don't have to buy a thousand packs because you only have four legendaries anyway. I just wonder how... I, I mean, I really like this new Gwent. I think this, there's some great combos in it. I Actually, the old Gwent wasn't as good with the card draw that you get between rounds. This new Gwent is very good with the card draw between rounds. Yeah, that's something really controversial still, the card draw. But... They have done something amazing, in my opinion, with the newest Gwent, like the closest beta updates of all the cards, they, they pretty much changed every single card, like every card, which was, in my opinion, necessary, kind of, for the card draw to work. Um, so now I'm, I'm actually fine with the card draw, because it's basically what we got now is a downgrade of every single card. Like, there's not a single way that you can actually play 64 power in like two like in a hero power uh, and, a, and a card that it's just impossible to do which says a lot actually about the new 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 grants the power levels have been uh, they, they they are less right now and just the overall powers the crazy combos won't be doable anymore because just um, the yeah the, I'm kind of struggling I'm falling over my words here because I, I saw you laughing there um, on the stream delay <laughs> Okay, uh, um, I apologize. So, what, just, I'm sorry, I, man. My my no fiance problem. was trying to sneak past me to get away, but instead she just put her butt up in the air for. Damn it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry. No, I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at her trying to slink through the living room. So yeah. Uh, it's it's fine. So basically, the new Gwent is, in my opinion, really really great because it's basically. Purely, if, if you played Hearthstone, you probably hate aggro and you love control because that's where the skill comes up. And basically what we got in Gwent is purely control. Like, there's nothing else. There's no stupid, cheap combo. Well, there, there maybe are, but it's, still, it, it's, it's like Hearthstone, but like, like totally not Hearthstone, but only the control aspect of it. So the fun part is like taking a game and making it purely strategic, with it, which is... Which is so genius. I mean, I, I'm loving the new Gwent. When I went through all the cards, because I waited a, a bit um, for waiting, um, of, of going through all the cards because after they changed everything, because I was like, if, they, if they're going to change this much, why bother getting into it and why bother making theory, uh, decks and theory crafting? Because they'll probably change it again really soon. And so I now got into it again because it's 10 more days. And then... I'm, I'm I'm loving the changes. I'm really loving it. I, I yeah, I totally agree with you. I um I uh there's something that just came on. That I wanted to say the audience participation part. So we have uh, in Gwen Discord. We have um, one of the people from CDPR on, and he proposed uh, interesting. I think it's very interesting. Uh, Mule posted it up having ten max silver or gold and four max gold in that total. Um, mm, that's. Go ahead. It's pretty pretty interesting. I mean, I, it's it's um, I like the breakdown. Uh, it, it, quite honestly, when I'm making my decks of 26 cards, I um, 
I have a hard, I have a hard time utilizing all the golds. To be honest with you, the silvers are far more valuable to me than the golds in most cases. Um, there's very few golds that are like I'm like, wow, these are great. Um, the silvers just there's so many silvers I want to put in. Oh yeah, the silvers are like the. I mean, the silvers make your deck. They they make uh, if if you're gonna cut something. It's probably gonna be a sil. I mean, if you want to put something else in it, in there to make your deck work, it's probably gonna be a silver. So the the thing is, we already had a hard time with games conquest um, with the limitations of silver cards. But I, I like it there. But this time it's 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 um, a whole. It, it, there's even more limitations. So this means your deck will be kind of less unique or less interesting so to say but also less strong and that's that's kind of what they did it's um wait so the deck size is 25 right <laughs> because okay yeah so this was part of a funny debate earlier there's a a great new talk show on the scene that we're going to reference a lot later um clear skies if you haven't checked it out two really good guys are doing it cast hype and little league um and check that out uh, there's a link in uh, Discord. But uh, we had a fun conversation with Little Lee and I. We were kind of going back and forth, having fun. And Baba Yaga, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. And they both will agree with me that 26 is the optimal deck size. No, I'm kidding. No. They, uh, it was just a fun thing we had where I make all my decks for like 33, 21, 28, 29, all these different numbers. And they're like 25 is optimal. So I made a joke that I'll never do 25 because I always got to do plus one to be a little different. So 26, and it's going to be 25 versus 26. And that's kind of what they're talking about. Awesome, awesome, Jack. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, I think the optimal deck size, we'll, we'll talk about it later in another topic, which is, um, spoilers, it's deck building. Um, but to come back on, on the new Gwent, I think, uh, I actually want to ask the audience, do you guys like the downgrade of having less power and actually not having crazy combos that if you do the actual combos, you're pretty much guaranteed to win, but if you don't, pull the combo off, you're pretty much uh, destined to lose. So what do you guys actually think of having less combos and less power overall, but a little more, I mean, just, you know, um, the, the strategic decisions that actually are guaranteed or that are, you know, cards, and if you have them, you will probably get to, get to use them, but not in a combo. So it's actually single cards there are combos of course but I actually want to know what the audience thinks about this yeah they, I mean it should be interesting because they were very vocal about it earlier um, I don't know I here's a question for you do you think you know is it is 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 um I'm oh, sorry I'm tripping my words now the um, decoy only having one decoy I think that's good or bad I, I think that Silver decoy kind of makes sense. However, I know we're getting to this deck building, but decoy was such a huge combo. It was, I mean, decoy was a combo. I mean, a combo initiator or a combo continuer. I'm very sad that it's a silver. I really like bouncing cards back. Although now, of course, there are ca cards that do that, mostly in Scoyatel, but there are cards that kind of keep on bouncing things back. Uh, it looks to me like the, one of the main differences between classic Gwent or you know, middle golden age classic versus modern new whatever silver age classic versus new Gwent is that they're taking combos out of like scorches and decoys and burying them inside the cards for more card combos, which then give you the reason to draw. What do you think about that? Well, spies kind of have been removed, so I don't think. Well, the decoy was also like you said, kind of like an enabler for for a lot of stuff. Not having, I mean, for, it was the most important for Spice, and that that was the thing that broke decoy, um, or that broke Spice, more to say, because you could have three decoys, you could play a lot of Spice, but they changed the Spice. So I'm asking myself, I mean, they 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 removed them almost, and so I'm, I'm just asking myself why also remove decoy if if you remove the Spice, but you you could have done one or the other. But uh, they, they did both, so that's kind of interesting. But um, I mean, in in previous Gwent, like in Gamescom Gwent, we had so many crazy combos and, and stuff that if if I had to come up with that, I I, I would be like, it's it's mind blowing what the devs could come up with. So so I think they're intelligent enough to to actually make the right decisions because they've played the game 
maybe a thousand times uh, already in, in their version. And who are we actually to say? They, they remove that. And I don't like it because that that doesn't work. That's purely theory crafting and uh, theory crafting and actually guessing. But they actually played and tested the game, so they actually kind of know it better. But still, it's disappointing. Well, it's not disappointing. It's sad to see Decoy go because it opened a lot of possibilities. And now only having one, I wonder if you're actually gonna run even one because it's 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 like you either run three or you don't run any. In my opinion, I mean. Oh, no, 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 that, no, that's great. No, you're, I was, there's been a lot of good comments on the board. I want to touch on them real quick. Um, and really, they're kind of agreeing. Um, and then definitely the decoy was really too powerful in, in Golden Age Gwent, I guess would be The Witcher 3. Um, and then there's just some great, great comments. Um, there's so many good ones. And I thought I'd re highlighted some of them in the chat. That's probably what I'll have to do is I'm going to highlight some great comments to touch back on later. But um, this is Little League. Uh, why I love Gwent most is times one card per turn. Why I love it, it's best for control. Now, I can honestly say as a control player myself, I agree 100%. This new, new Gwent is phenomenal for control. It's total control-centric, and I love it. Um, round of Gwent, I like it. Removing things like tight bond was a good change. It was too polarizing. And then again, Little League, because card advantage is so strong, decoy should always have been silver. And then to keep on going, um, like, and then Mule, now this is one I want to touch on. I like how they only have one decoy, but more other engine mechanics, like Reaver Scouts. Now we're going to talk on that. We have our favorite cards, kind of like what uh, Clear Skies did, which was very good on their part. They were great. Uh, we're going to do a little touch on that, but they've kind of done it really, really well. But we'll hit on it again on our version of it. But um, yes, I think Reaver Scouts is one of my favorite cards in the game. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, decoy was too powerful. It seems to be a consensus. And then Chess had a great one. Um, chess haha, great streamer as well. Uh, could be decided if one player has decoy and the other player has decoy at the bottom of their deck. So again, yeah, it seems to be a consensus there. So a lot of good, a lot of good. And then round of Gwent thought it was funny how almost all mechanics from old Gwent have been nerfed to silver, horn, scorch, decoy. Now they are thinking of changing weathers too. What do you think about that? I know you had talked about weathers. What, what is your opinion on that? It's interesting because playing weather alone is a giant risk. If you pull a weather, and it, I don't know, I know what weather it would be, but if if you play a weather and it doesn't fit or it doesn't, it, it, it's useless against your opponent. That's one card that you cannot actually do anything with, or it's just basically like skip a turn, which is huge. It's so devastating. So I really don't mind ch them changing weathers because. I either don't run weathers or I run a really risky weather, and having having that is is like always like mm, do I do I want to have that in there? But if, if I pull it off, it's it's really rewarding though. So I like that they they kind of are removing everything. But the thing is, uh, around the when it's, it's so right. Every old mechanic is almost nerfed to silver, which is actually kind of funny because that that's where they came from and you can see how much they have developed their game actually into like a full standalone game or in, in a, into a full card game um, and there are some some different cards like um, that summon two weathers and I think those might be worth playing but not a weather alone uh, I, I don't think that's worth playing anymore because it's just so risky but the reward could be high though so I don't know what you think about this, but I think I, I wouldn't run a weather in almost any deck ex, uh, except monsters, of course. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a great point. Now see, now this is I don't know if I'm kind of weird in this. I'm sure there's other people that see it this way. Maybe you do as well. For some reason, for me, Gwent is 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 just the best card game I've ever played. And I hate to sound like a fanboy here, but it's true because I like the way that it's it's more like a game called Total War, where it's uh, this kind of PC game with Warhammer. But anyway. It's, it's like a battlefield. And I think that Gwent represents a actual living battlefield where you have your siege rows, your range rows, and then your, um, yeah, your, I mean your, your melee, your, sea, your range, and then your siege. And weather does affect it. I mean, weather would affect all those conditions, and especially with monsters, it just makes sense. Whereas some card games add mechanics that really don't make sense, uh, you know, like RNG and Yog saron and just to name a few, where it just kind of throws craziness into it. This seems to make a lot of sense. I don't know that I'd be for weathers going 
to silver. I like what they have where you can have common weather conditions. Then you have silver, which add two weather conditions. I just made a Northern Realms control deck utilizing weather um, because it would. If you could control the weather, you could control the battlefield, which is technically where it should be. So I'm kind of a big weather fan, although I don't have a... I know, and I know it obviously goes really great with monsters. It's like peanut butter and jelly, but I, I just like weather as a control mechanic on its own. What do you think about that? It's, it's interesting what some people say. Like, Chess is totally right. Witcher 3 Gwent is a single-player experience, and that was the fun part about Gwent, uh, the old Gwent. That was actually collecting the cards and playing a nice a, a nice game, actually, that was enjoyable, really enjoyable. Even. Um, but actually playing it 1v1, I printed the whole set and bored of it real fast, and now I just have like my Gwent cards and a kind of a trophy and not as something I want to play on a, uh, on a weekly basis or something because it's just it, 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 it doesn't work that good in, in a multiplayer experience but back to weather um, it's, um, Mahakaman is, is totally right here um, my, this chat is giving such good feedback holy shit um, <laughs> the, he says the weather will fit in it will totally depend on the meta basically and if, if there's a lot of those decks that's really in a really strong spot. That's actually true because uh, one card, one weather card, can totally counter uh, a full deck, which is still because there's not a single card that can actually be added into the into the deck that can one full um, tier or one deck list. So I think it will be hard to actually make one top tier deck that will conquer all the other decks because you just have so many. I mean. Because of weather or because of some other cards, you can just counter the focus of, of that of that deck. So um, I, I think the, the the way to counter decks is I mean it's so easily done in Gwent. Um, so there's just so much freedom. Uh, I'm kind of getting off the point here and, and just praising Gwent for all the freedom and, and all the, <laughs> the the more strategic vision they have on on their on their game. But yeah, that's kind of what I think about it. Um, just weather, we'll see what, where it goes, but yeah, no, yeah, no I, one of the things I was, I was experimenting with uh, TTS, I can't, I don't know if I, I don't know if, how much we should pump this up, but it's been an invaluable resource uh, for me, uh, is that I really love Griffins, um, Arch Griffins, I think, I'm, I might be wrong on that one, but whatever, it brings sunshine to your field, field of battle for an interesting take on a weather control monster deck, and I hope to see more of that for other, um, for other class, for other uh, factions, I should say, where you can control the weather without having a clear skies, for example. Um, sorry, I was typing in the in the chat. Could you repeat your question, please? That, that hurts, man. That that. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, <I'm playing. laughs> like, if you're not even listening to me, we're screwed, man. Because like, my own co-host is tuning me out this early. We're 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 fucked. Uh, no, I was just saying I really like the uh, mechanic for the for the monsters have a card, uh, Griffin or Arch Griffin. I'm not sure which one. Um, that actually, you put them on board and it clears the weather for that row on your side. And no, I, other I, actually, get that. Uh, I, I I like that mechanic because um, it it basically is a double counter. So weather is already a counter. But then you can counter the counter. The more characters there are, the, the more in-depth the game becomes. And the more strategic and the more mind games. Here's where Gwen, the, the thing about Gwen is, mind games, they, they always praise the mind games. And card draw kind of reduced the mind games because uh, you only had 10 cards and you had to do something with that. But now, it, it, it brings it a little back because there's so many cards. And, and the power is also nerfed a little bit. So actually playing one card can, can really, really make or break your game and having a card like that is is just amazing because if, if you can basically that's basically swinging the card and, and it's, it's it's one of those cards like does he have it or doesn't he and and you just don't know and, and you're thinking about that and you can that way you can just like sit there for three minutes thinking about just one decision and that's basically control that's when, when you're thinking like that that's that. That's the the best moments in Hearthstone when you're thinking: Should I play it or not? Does he have it or not? And and just in that control way, if it feels fair, it's. I mean, if if you get hit by that, it feels. It doesn't feel unfair because you know. I mean, it, it's deserved. It's it's just a card that you, that you have, and 
you know, that makes it all the much better. It, it gets in a controlly kind of way. So, yeah, you know, that's, uh, I mean, I mean it's, it's something really positive, in my opinion. They should add more cards like that. I agree, and this is actually a great point from Little League. And again, um, check out their show, Clear Skies. Uh, I just want to give all everybody in here that, that has content, we're all like a team. So check out his, his podcast with uh, Cass Hype. But he had a great point here. Just touching on Ruben about one deck not dominating, I agree, and mainly due to the mechanic of times one card per turn. That's huge. That's a great point, Little League. That's a great, great point. Horrible name, by the way. But anyway, that's, um, uh, it's, a great, it's a great point. Um, and I think that's huge because in, in Hearthstone, you have mana crystals and you can just play, you know, a one-turn kill where you can hit 70, 90 points of damage with, you know, patrons or whatever. Here, you can only play one turn. Even if you have this awesome combo, uh, your opponent always has a chance to answer and stop it. You can't just, like, even if uh, one of the nastiest combos that I've played lately and we're going to talk on it is Reinforcement Reaver Scout. And that one chain, I can play a ton of cards. I'll get kind of delve into that in a second. But other than that, and maybe a few others, if I'm setting up for a combo, like, like for example, um, oh, God, Redanian Elite, right? It's a four that then adds two and two as you put on the board. I can't just put all those down on one turn. I just can't. So once you put that card comes in play, you as an opponent has a chance to counterattack and read the, the battlefield, so to speak, and make a counterattack. I think that's really huge about what's going to make Gwent better than Hearthstone and a lot of other reasons, but that's a huge point that Little League made, although um, I should have talked on that. There's some, a lot of people making some great points and trying to get to you all. Um, so I And um, some comments, Mule Retha said it's because you wouldn't play Weather as Monsters. I can see why they did that. This card is really important. Some Arch Griffin love. Uh, also bridges the gap between Monster Weather decks and non-Weather decks. Otherwise, you would be stuck as either Full Weather or Weather Immune or no Weathers at all. King Black Tooth makes an appearance. Other decks without Arch Griffins have to rely on Clear Skies. We know that units are a lot easier to bring back than special cards. And that's actually a great point. I, I was just reading that aloud. Uh, King Black Tooth is one of our, um, in my opinion, best content creators. Does a phenomenal job with his videos. That's a great point. And I think that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, where these new cards, and, and uh, Ruben, you had a great point. I didn't think about it. We should call it the Silver Age of Gwent. Because Witcher 3 Gwent, all those cards are now silver. Scorch, Decoy, and everything. Um, and here we go that they're putting on mechanics in the cards themselves instead of on Commander's Horns, Scorch, and Decoy. Silver Age of Gwent. I love the name. I love, love the name. So again, thanks to everyone for all your comments and all your chant. It's really lovely to see everyone act, interacting and um, we, we try to read everything but it's also hard to actually talk and actually say some intelligent stuff <laughs> and um, at the same time read your comments but we are doing our best um, so thanks again for everyone uh, tuning in and actually commenting um, so yeah I think we should move on to the next topic will you introduce that uh, Shifu? Yes sir good point good good little good little slip in there I like that it was nice all right so the next one after we got it was kind of ties into it deck building um, now we all know the 26 cards is the way to go. I think we've all agreed to that as an industry standard, trademark. Um, but uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on this new? I know you, you had an interesting point. We talked about this earlier in our pre-show meeting. Yes, we're that professional that we have a pre-show meeting. Um, that you didn't you didn't want to build any decks, but you kind of changed here uh, as we were talking in, in the podcast. What are you thinking? Are you thinking you're going to build some decks? What decks are interesting to you? How do you go about your creative process? Um, so actually, why I didn't want to build any cards was because we had we had games come Gwent. I played a, a shit ton, and it was amazing. I loved it. I made some really top tier decks, in my opinion, of of Northern Realms. I loved their combos. I loved their synergy. Everything about, about it. And suddenly we had the stress test, and bam, it was gone. It was all gone, and there was so many things changed. Cards were. my dreams of actually having that kind of deck and kind of broke off the mood for me and and I, I took a, a kind of a break a big break of, of like two weeks or a week and a half and um, of actually reading stuff or even watching videos of King Black Tooth sorry um, but I watch them all now um, and uh, so now I'm actually I, I read all the cards again I mean with the closed beta cards I, I read them all like twice and um, I'm, now I'm loving it. I'm, I'm actually seeing their vision that they're going to, and now I'm, I totally want to play a, again in um, in 
tabletop simulator. I want to make some more decks, but I kind of held back because I didn't want I didn't want to that all my fear of crafting was just is gone. But now I'm 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 loving it. I'm I'm loving the changes. I, I have hope again because damn, I I didn't think I would get over that feeling uh, so quick. But this, <laughs> I play with Mahakaba and with other uh, people that come on them. Um, come on the tabletop simulator but primarily Mahakaman and he helps me a little bit with deck creating and giving me tips and stuff and progressively I'm just adding that card this card and we lay them open in tabletop simulator we look at it and we say like maybe we should replace this with that and then we try it and we play three games or something and it works then then I'm like yep I'm, I'm convinced of this and we keep doing that we keep doing that until I'm like this is the perfect deck in my opinion this is fun this is strong and it's it's just good. And when I have that feeling, then I, I'm I'm done with my deck actually. And it takes a lot of time to make a deck for me. That's really interesting. That's so good. Oh, so one thing you kind of broke up at the beginning. What deck did you make that got changed because of the uh, changes? Um, I actually made um, a Northern Realms deck with that had a lot of draw. I, I could almost eighty percent of the time draw my full deck. Um, I rip card draw, rip everything of that, <laughs> and uh, I also had a lot of medics. I had and I had some reaver scouts in there, and I had some crazy combos. One turn, I, I mean, I only had fifty power in total, but I drew my whole deck and uh, my whole deck. Sorry, <laughs> um, and um, I, I um, could. I mean, one turn, I relied on on the combo of my hero power and uh, the the scouts that could buff, get, get buffed up to sixty four and. Yeah, I won one round with that, and the other round was just buffing it up with commandos. Every 